Hello everyone and my dear subscribers. Today I'm going to be talking about the different builds of Soul Fists. After the Arc Passive update, um almost every single Soul Fist, probably you can say almost every single Soul Fist, Swiftness EO or Robust, they all went to spec EO build. And it is still the most commonly used one. So I'll start with Specchio. This is the one I am playing right now as well. Uh, the pros of playing Specchio is you get short cooldowns on skills. Every time you enter a new hype, you get 10 second, you get 10 second cooldowns on your skills. Plus your hype gives you cooldowns on your skills as well. So yeah, th your skills are your skill cooldowns are very, very short. Also, because you're playing energy overflow, your skills don't lock out even if you, even if the yellow bar drops below one or zero. And you're pretty flexible when you're doing your skill rotations. Like you can stay in hype one, two, three, do full cycles, or you can just skip all that, go straight to three, or in the midst of cycle two, I mean, in the, in the midst of hype two, you can go to hype three so on and so on depending on the situation however there are some cons that i have to mention which are this spec eo is not playable until you reach 1680 or 80 alignment points because of this node the one that gives you 10 second cooldowns on your skills every time you enter new hype other cons would be it's a slow spec class and it puts you in a pressure to use all the skills all six skills in six second window six second ready attack buff window your energy release also there are not that many engraving choices so you end up having to use mass increase and this makes the matters even worse and there is not that many engraving choices. Um, there's two variants. You can use either precise stagger or stabilized status. Some people are using stabilized status thinking that it's okay because you just have to keep your HP above 65%. It used to be 75, I believe, or 80, I'm not sure. But they... Um, buffed stabilized status so that your hp has to be above 65 percent which doesn't sound that bad but in a real rate let's say your hp is already around like 70 percent like over here and you want to burst with atro that takes away 25 percent of your hp then you gotta pot up again after using atro so for situations like that, I do not like to use stabilized status. I use precise stagger build. Um, another reason why I use precise stagger is because Soulfist, I don't know why, but they give you a lot of crit damage. They give you a lot of crit damage from this line, from this node. And this is a another reason why you can't use keen blunt you can use keen blunt when this is at level one but as soon as you is as soon as you can get it to level two your keen blunt starts getting deprived or it's not it's weaker than other engravings so the engravings i use are crystal grudge adrenaline mass increase and that's just for um yearning and precise stagger and the evolution points, one point on swiftness, full spec, rest on crit, and everything crit rate, and sharp uh, blunt thorn or blunt spike. Right now, with my crit rate, I'm not supposed to be using blunt thorn or blunt spike, but that is why I am learning adrenaline. And after, adrenaline, after I finish Adrenaline, I will also finish Precise Dagger. And also, I'm going to try to cut a bracelet with Crit Rate. That's going to give me full efficiency of using Blunt Thorn. Um, I did talk about Stabilized Status a little earlier. 
you can take out precise dagger and put stabilized status and not play the blunt thorn or blunt spike build you can play the stand up striking keep this crit right here and put all the rest of, uh put all the rest of the points on limit break this is higher damage and then precise dagger build by about three to five percent this is stronger however this puts you this gives you two conditions stand up striking when you take hits you lose stacks and it takes two seconds to build one stack so you're losing damage if you're tanking any hits another thing you gotta use stabilized status with it so there's two things that you gotta worry about if you want to play this build and i don't want to stress so that's the reason why i use the precise dagger build so this is what a cycle would look like um some people might show you different cycles they might do they might do two skills in hype one and then hype two uh, people have different cycles. Some people like to use Shadow Breaker instead of Lightning Palm. But Shadow Breaker's range is very short, so I prefer using Lightning Palm instead. By using Lightning Palm, you'll see what I'm saying. So the cycle will look like this. As you can see, in high 3, I was able to fit all 6 skills just before the radio attack buff run, uh, well not 6, 7, just before the radio attack buff ran out. So it is pretty tight because you have to, because you're a spec class and you're using mass increase. That is a normal skill cycle and this is my actual cycle with spirit bomb. And then I atro right before it lands. That is my atro cycle. Um, there are some people who also do this. Throw it in hype 2. And then turn on hype 3 as soon as you land. But that's kind of conditional. What you have to do is throw it from very far away. So Spirit Bomb <laughs> takes longer to land. And you can turn it on just before it lands. That's another spirit, That's another way to use Spirit Bomb. Um, but that means I might not be standing on like bars aoe buff or artist aoe buff so i just like to i just like to use this it lands just in time is the other awakening worth using not really spirit bomb just hits harder and it's more convenient for atro cycles Next, I'll talk about Robust. Robust recently got a balance patch on October 23rd. Main change that the Robust got is that they don't have to ready attack buff for Awakening Spirit Bomb anymore. So the, the cycle is way more flexible now. Um, skill rotation and everything is the same as Robust before. It's consistent cycle and performance. You can either do one cycle in Hive 3 and then turn it off or, or do two cycles depending on the situation. Um, you might want to do two cycles if the boss is about to phase or, and generally just do one cycle robust. I don't play a robust myself. I just know that the cycle is the same. Um, I believe it's energy blast instead of force orb. It's Energy Blast instead of Force Orb or Phantom Illusion. Illusion fan Phantom Strike? Illusion Strike? Yeah, you take either these two out and then put Energy Blast in there. 
pros consistent cycle performance the performance is pretty consistent and uh yeah no need to radio attack buff for radio attack buff for spirit bomb cons same thing they can't really do anything outside of the dps cycle when the hype is coming back the hype hype does come back very fast now but still damage wise i think robots is at par with specchio or at par or slightly weaker than specchio all right next build i'm gonna talk about no actually before that i should talk about robust engravings robust engravings i can tell you guys that you can they don't no more precise stagger mass increase and keen blunt keen blunt is what robots use and the evolution points look something like this either that or no swiftness at all and more on crit this is depending on personal preference this is what's most commonly used by robust players why one swift Robus has to Robus is a spec class as well and Robus also has the pressure to fit in all six skills or four or or I mean all six skills or seven in six second radio attack window and Robus actually has longer animation skills which is energy blast is one of them so having one swiftness helps squeeze in all the skills within the buff now on the October 23rd, there were some changes that they made for Swiftness EO. They tried to revive, revive the class or the build by shortening the downtime by using skills. And that is this tab right here. So I tried it out. I tried Swiftness Crit, Swiftness Spec. But the downtime, the downtime buff, like getting... Shorten the downtime is not that significant. It short it shortens it from 50 seconds down to about 38-ish seconds. Or maybe a little more with spec. But the that downtime really hurts the class and DPS. On top of that, you lose a lot of damage from Dominion. Not Dominion, but the Dominion cosplay or passive evolution tabs these two you lose a lot of damage from here um and the high three burst if high three burst was the merit of playing swiftness eo in tier three because you lose too much damage the high three parse is not even that strong anymore my spec eo one two three cycle if it does about 160 mil um full high three cycle is about 140 mil so there's no big merit in playing the swiftness build. On top of that, if my specchio recovers hype in about 12 to 13 seconds, swiftness EO recovers hype in about 40 seconds. So there's a lot of DPS loss there. So the build I recommend for, for Sophist enjoyers is specchio. Um, if you if you just made a Sophist, then what I recommend when you're 1660 and you want to play Arc Passive, until you get to 1680, play Robust. Just play Robust. Swiftness is not, it's not that great anymore. Play Robust until you get to 1680 and then switch over to Spec Yield when you reach 1680. That is my recommendation. That is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try my best to answer to my best knowledge. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that thumbs button. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.